All right, so this week we caught up with Jerry Campion, uh, founder of Dream Drive in Japan, uh, talking about founding a business as a foreigner in Japan, uh, success, and, and what it's taken for him to get his project off the ground. Uh, if you have any questions for him, check out his website, uh, give him a follow on social, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Cool. Well, thanks for giving us the time today. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, you know, I, I guess the first question is, uh, why are you in Japan? How did you end up in, in Japan of all places? Yes, yeah, so I am British Australian and uh, I was born in England, spent about 16 years in England and my family immigrated to Australia. I was there for about six years before coming to Japan on working holiday, originally for six months uh, with my Australian wife. Um, and we stayed. So that's basically, that, that's a simple version. <laughs> uh, just found different work and spent a lot of time here as a headhunter recruiter in advertising marketing. Nice. Where we met uh, years ago. And uh, yeah, and uh, then just, uh, yeah, from there pivoted into doing what I really want to do, which is bring like camper van, van life uh, culture to Japan. Yeah, that's super interesting. It's uh, when I first heard about Dream Drive and, and what you were doing there, I had seen not in Japan, I'd seen in other places a couple of people doing slightly similar stuff with, with vans and retrofitting. What uh, what made that your interest? How did you get into uh, retrofitting vans for camping? Well, it's kind of my like upbringing. Uh, I grew up in small town England um, and always wanted my, and we, had, we, we my family was pretty poor or stingy <laughs> when growing up my parents were. And uh, I remember when I always wanted them to buy a new car because uh, in England, the, each year you get different license like A, B, C, D. So you can't know what age your car is. And, you know, as a kid growing up with not many brands and stuff, it's pretty self-conscious about it. And my dad did quite well at a certain point. Uh, he started a computer shop and I thought, OK, finally, you can buy a nice car. And he brought a vintage VW camper van. Oh. And I just when, I, when he drove home with that thing, I was like, OK, that's pretty cool. And it definitely <laughs> kind of affected kind of my tastes and interests. Yeah. Um, and uh, and from that point, we were driving on this camper, uh, 1960, 1969, 70 era camper. I just really liked the lifestyle. We'd go to some of the meets, would use it for vacations. And when I moved to Australia uh, shortly after with a family, uh, I just saw how camper culture was way more uh, advanced in a way like a, a lot of families have camper vans in australia or they have some kind of setup they use for camping and i did a lot of road trips with my friends and a lot of my best memories came from these kind of trips and then moving to japan you can see the potential but it's not so common um mm -hmm. but over, over time i just thought well this is really gonna be this is japan's perfect for camper vans you've got safe roads easy to drive great food and onsen, which you don't have in other locations, which means you've got the bathrooms kind of sorted out. So mm -hmm. I just thought, well, let's, it's time to kind of build this. I also did like a year of cabinet making in Australia, like when I first moved there. Um, so I kind of had some knowledge of how to use, do woodworking and so forth. Now we've got like a, we've got like a free qualified Japanese craftsmen. Uh, well, two, two qualified Japanese craftsmen. But we, 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 I'm not really using the tools anymore. It doesn't make sense, but it, it, it at least allowed me to get started um, building this kind of business. Um, so that's just awesome. kind of putting together all those kind of areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of a big jump though, to go from having an interest in a Volkswagen camper and, and kind of that culture yeah. and a little bit of woodworking to all of a sudden, uh, you know, breaking out of recruiting and, and headhunting in Japan yeah. into, you know, launching a business with that. How did that come to be? Well, I kind of just felt like if I'm going to, I love Japan, I love being here, but I didn't necessarily, you know, you start, I started another business before that in recruiting and it was connected to recruiting, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I just thought like, okay, I've got to do what I really want to do. If it, like, if I'm going to dedicate my life to it, if I'm going to be in Japan building something, I've got to build what I really want to build, not build what I should build based on my background. <laughs> and I kind of, I knew I could do it, but I, I just felt, okay, I've just got to, I've just got to jump in. And from building another business and building kind of what I didn't want to build for a while, I just knew like, you don't want to dedicate your life to like the core years, like of your like 
working career to something yeah. you don't want to do. Well, I mean, that's what most people do, right? But if you don't have to, so I thought let's just let's just burn the ships and give it a shot, doing like trying to bring to life what I really like. And there's so much kind of um, interest and uh, people interested in what we're doing and interest from customers and people having such a good, great time and experience using our products. Mm-hmm. That just told me about okay, we're on the right path. Let's just keep going. Uh, building awesome. this yeah so i've got to ask like when you kind of jumped into it you're like okay we're going to do this we're going to build a van uh obviously you put that together did you did you find a customer beforehand and have it contracted commissioned uh or did you just build one of your vans and then try and find I, a, a customer how did that how do you even find I somebody had to buy some, that so i had some i had some money um okay. from from what i was doing before so i basically um i have a i have a house i've got some space outside my house we're just mm. on in sedigaya area on the outskirts of sedigaya so i basically took the car we already had and converted it into a van um so i just pulled <laughs> it apart I, I i figured out rent a car license i spent basically three to six months just figuring out the legalities of it like yeah. changing the vehicle's registration uh, camp, like rental car license, building, oh, there's a lot of stuff to figure out. Um, and then I just tore, tore our car, family car apart and converted it into a camper and got it got it checked out. Um, and I did it, I started it by myself and I recruited, being a background in headhunting, started recruiting people who could help me build it and could take over that side of the business. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I found a great team of people um, and it's been, and then actually because of Corona, a lot of really talented Japanese craftsmen lost good opportunities. So we hired more people. We, it wasn't the right best time for us to do it, but we just saw the opportunity and we thought, okay, we've got to kind of, we've got to like grab these guys and, and, and our quality's just gone, gone way higher uh, as, we've, as we've just uh, grown with um, opportunities which came our way. So, but yeah, it started very, just very much like just doing our own van. I tested it. I got, we got the rental plates with my own car. It's very basic build, um, but people used it and they liked it. Um, before I did all of that though, I just created an image of what it looked like. And I, and I created a website and I showed oh, okay. people. And I even ran some Facebook budget just to see how people would react. And cool. if people were excited about it. Uh, that was just for one day and people were adding their friends on it saying let's do this and then really? I, I, I had to tell them i had to write a comment if they went through the website the book it said sorry this is real <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I did that just because i knew i didn't want to like invest all this time money and energy and then no one cares yeah. so I, I i thought okay i've got to at least test that. it's a bit sneaky but you know that's it uh, a bit of a background in market research i knew that you should really at least make sure you're not insane yeah, um, yeah, yeah first if you can and then i invested that time to build the first one and then that first one is really a prototype we were able to get excitement people rented it people liked it we improved it and then that, and then we're moving towards building a product which we're going to be building now which i think is really uh, the perfect size vans for japan we've got a smaller one we've got a larger one and we've really kind of refined our product um, nice. based on feedback from our customers using them that's awesome. So just to kind of uh, swing back to the the website that you spilled up, uh, you know, before you had your first van, that's very Timothy Ferris, very Tim Ferris, um, you know, kind of yeah, yeah, research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, so, no, exactly. Exactly. And I, yeah, I read his books and stuff. And I, st- I guess I, I forgot that was in there. But yeah, that's definitely stolen from his kind of playbook. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So once you had your first van and, and you've got some kind of market interest in it, uh, I guess then you actually put together a real website and you had your booking system and, you know, how did it pick up? Was it uh, was it a trickle of people? Was it a flood of demand or, or how's that been for you? It's always been like initial peak and then it always goes good and then down and, and then builds. With us, yeah. it's always been the pattern. Um, so, I mean, it's been like... It's been that pattern many times. I mean, we've going for like two and a half years. I've been working on this idea now. Um, and right now we're going back into lockdown. So it's another one of those kind of like, we get hit hard and then we figure it yeah. out. Um, so relying on just rentals has been, it has been a bit like that. Because like right now people don't want to rent vans so right, much, right. Uh, but it'll pick up again. Yeah. Um, so, so we're kind of switching, we're kind of evolving our model. Uh, now that we've been going for a few years, 
and people like our build quality yeah. and feel comfortable selling the vehicles. So we're actually pro- we're actually focusing mainly on building vehicles to sell. So selling it to people who want to own vans. We have done this initially too, um, but we're basically building vans for people to, to own, and we're creating like a certain model of vehicle which we think is like the best size. Uh, and we're really focusing on just building up the materials, doing it the right way, and and uh, and gearing up for selling this vehicle. And we'll sell it to camper van dealerships, direct consumer, but also to other rental car companies who who would want to have a van they can rent, yeah. and we can oh, also help them idea. help them get some customers. So we've got some we've got some big uh, customers uh, who who are we're talking to now who who would want like a a fleet. So mm-hmm. it kind of gives us that more stability, and from there we can we can keep offering rentals uh, yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, ideally, uh, in the, in the, when when the timing's right, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So when you uh, I guess launched this and you're just you know uh, going out with rentals, uh, how did you do your pricing research? How did you kind of land on on what you should charge people for this to make it a a thing for you and also value for them? Uh, we went. Well, because we're doing more, it's tricky because a lot of uh, pricing in Japan is not not um, straightforward. Like they'll say one price, which is very low, and then we don't include like a steering wheel and stuff. So by the time you get everything you need, it's actually quite expensive. Yeah, we didn't do that uh, too much. Like we pretty much say the price. Uh, we do separate the cleaning fee because it kind of encourage people to use it a longer time. Yeah, uh, and we include like. A real bed, and, and we've basically gone a bit more premium, but we're including like a real nice bed with all the like white linens, hotel grade, and all the basic equipment people need. So we, we're kind of trying to simplify the price, but we definitely went to live on a premium. To people who've never rented a car in Japan, uh, they might think it's expensive. Mm-hmm. We find, but if they've, anybody who's rented a car or anybody who's who's um, Anybody who's uh, uh, used a camper van, especially, they, they, they see that it's kind of like a, a reasonable price. Um, but yeah, a little, probably a little bit on on. Um, it's a, basically a reasonable price. We're not going super premium because we are trying to uh, keep the vans vans out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and we're now doing a bit more seasonality. So we're, we're playing with the prices again now to, to do like seasonal kind of changes, uh, a bit more like a airline. Um, so yeah, that we makes can sense. keep the, Keep the vans busy even on the lower months. Yeah, months. even like ryokans and stuff, they have their you know high season, low season stuff too. So yeah, 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 exactly. Cool. And it's kind of yeah, it's kind of necessary. Yeah. What um, so far? What's what's been the the best channel or the best uh, tactic that you've had for marketing to to get this out and to get it to grow? Oh, uh, it's all it's. I mean, it's direct uh, advertising on performance uh, Google <laughs> Google Facebook ads. Uh, it's actually the main. So it's it's a really that kind of surprised me getting into the business. Um, mm-hmm. Is just how much uh, there's no you can't use Airbnb, you can't use Bookings.com. Yeah. So you gotta you, to get the inquiries, you kind of gotta run performance ads. So there's a lot of complexity to running this type of business. Yeah. Uh, to, especially to create the demand. Uh, so we're doing a lot of focus on like Instagram and content and building media. We basically mm-hmm. build vans. We build media uh and we we create the content of how to do it uh, and and so we and we do create content for like prefectures too on how to do camper van routes there as well so that kind of does bring in some revenue from from that um but yeah it's it's basically um it's a lot harder than i thought but and that's why we're kind of building out vans to sell as well because there's a lot of demand there which will kind of give us more strength in our business and then we can keep growing and be there for like the rentals when when inbound comes back in a bigger way. For sure. Do you uh, do you find that you're getting mostly Japanese uh, customers? Do you have a decent foreigner market as well? Yeah. Uh, the ex- well, we were focused on the inbound market when we first started. Uh, okay. After after Corona hit, we were focused on the expat market at first because everything mm-hmm. we had was in English. Um, and then with now we're about 50-50 expat and Japanese. So our okay. Japanese customer base is growing uh, the fastest at this point, and it will soon overtake. Uh, it probably has already uh, overtaken uh, as our main customer base now. Very yeah. cool. Which is great. Um, so we're very happy to be doing that. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Uh, is there anything that you've done since you've launched this that uh, fell really flat in its face that you would never do again? So many uh, things. 
<laughs> most of the stuff uh, we've done. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, I think like when you start a business, you're really investing a lot of time and money into learning uh, about what you think you're doing uh, in like the first two years. So um, it's definitely been a long, long path. Uh, and yeah, like size of vehicles, um, types of vehicles, what we think will be popular and what people, and there's, there's, for example, there's things people like, especially with Van Life Media, there's like the idea of Van Life, which is what a lot of people are buying, but they're not going to rent it. They might like this photo and say, this is cool, but they're never going to rent the vehicle. So right, right, right. Do you, is building a vehicle which fits that mold good when people just like it, but no one books it? Of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, and, and we get a lot of people who want, who, who, I guess you got to like look through the hype and try and do, have a market research mind to really figure out what are people actually going to use and pay for, not what do people like. And I think that's one of the, and that kind of has, yeah, really affects a lot of decisions. Yeah. Uh, also the complexity of building a strong team, good culture and good processes to, to, be able to put a product to market at a good at a reasonable price yeah uh, yeah everything on there that's like an ongoing learning uh adventure for us no doubt. Um, there's a lot to juggle what what we should do and what we shouldn't do so we kind of have to do we're kind of doing the marketing we're building vehicles and we're good i think we're good at it like i think we're doing both of those things well um but also having rentals where we're renting all the vehicles and trying to expand that that's that's the hard part because we need lots of people in lots of locations so yeah we're more now equipping other companies with our vans and customers so they can rent them as well we can still give a dream drive experience at different locations and we can give them customer support and create routes and guides of where people can go so we kind of looking at that part as something we can kind of um, let other people be part of um and and, and rent the vehicles uh, in, in different parts around japan so that's nice. all. A, this is all learning from just building up bit by bit and seeing what we're good at and what we can like scale, and what is harder for us to scale and and seeing. But it's an opportunity for other people. So, yeah. yeah. Has uh, has anybody crashed a van yet or damaged a van in a terrible oh, way? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> everything everything that could go wrong has happened. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> not everything. Like uh, obviously, we've we've had we've had crashes, but we haven't had anything too serious. The good thing about Japan is you don't normally get those massive pileups. Right. All the the motorways is you can only drive faster than motorways, and there's the motorways are done in a way where there's lots of space and things don't normally happen here. Um, yeah. And locally, there's a lot of accidents with like uh, pedestrians and stuff. So, but it's usually slow moving. Um, but yeah, the issues we've had is people crashing, driving a van which is too big for them uh, in a small street oh, uh, yeah. they probably shouldn't go down. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Usually it's because uh, they're not looking or understanding it. So, so as we've done more training with drivers on like how to drive them and what to watch out for, we're seeing a reduction. So we haven't had any issues for quite a while now. Uh, but for, for certain seasons, as, as we started picking up on more in the local market, uh, we were getting like uh, quite a few accidents in the same kind of uh, busy months, but now now we, we realize just having um, yeah we can train people better and give them advice and we do see a reduction of that. So all this kind of learnings and knowledge we can pass on to we'll be passing on as as we're doing our second. We're doing a location in Okinawa this early this year, um, oh, cool. and it's going to be managed remote. So we're creating all this knowledge and how to do it and. Uh, how to educate people? We, we can pass on uh, to these other comp to the, to the guys running that uh, operation as well with Dream Drive fans. Very cool, awesome man. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, and introducing Dream Drive to us. And uh, yeah, I, I wish you the best of luck going forward with that. I think it's an awesome project, and uh, the fact that you're getting to the fleet market, the rental market like that, I think you know nothing but yeah. uh, upwards potential for you guys. Thanks so much, Colton, and uh, yeah. all the best to you too with the uh, podcast. Looks great. Cool, thank you. Yeah.